you. Um, and we're going to start opening up in prayer. Y'all just bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the gathering of the saints tonight, Lord. Just yes. ask you to bless your word. Move me out of the way, God. And speak through me, Father, what you want your people to, to hear, Lord. Yes. And we just give you all the praise and all the glory. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. brother. Hallelujah. All right. Is everybody there yet? Hallelujah. Yeah, 12 what? Uh, just 12 one. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. We'll start there. I think. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And like I said, we're preaching on holiness. And what the Bible says on the, the definition, not the Bible, but the dictionary says on the definition of holiness, being exalted or worthy of complete devotion as one perfect in goodness and righteousness. Divine for the Lord our God is holy. So it's being being separated, come out from among the, the rest of them. Amen. God is holy, and he wants us to be holy, and it's the work of his spirit in us. And it reads, uh, we first started, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so, uh, so a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which is so easily ensnares us, and let us run with the endurance, the race that is set before us. So we're going to kind of stay on this chapter right here. Um, he talks about laying away the weight of this world and the stresses of this life. You know, give give Jesus our burdens. Let him let him take it, bear our burdens, and he'll give you peace in that storm. <coughs> God Almighty is on the throne. No matter what your situation is, he's still there. Amen. He's in full control. No matter what it looks like, no matter what the world thinks, what the president thinks, God's in control. Amen. So it's up to us to pray and, and, and his will be done. And it talks about sin. Uh, which sin easily, so easily ensnares us. Um, and, and the reason why this happens sometimes is because we think we can handle it or nobody's going to find out about your sin. So we hide it. Nobody's going to find out. So, you know, doing things when nobody's around, you ain't, you ain't supposed to be doing. Um, and that's where the devil, you cannot let the devil trip you up into you thinking that you're not going to get caught or not somebody's not going to find out. Because it will, your sin will find you out. Um, he tries to trip you up thinking you can just have a few drinks. Amen. He trips you up thinking you can just look at pornography and nobody's going to find out. Yeah. Your sin will find you out. And that's what's wrong with the body of Christ. We think we can do a little bit and hide it. It's gonna find, he's going to find it out. It, it will be found out. And right now, pornography is one of the, one of the leading things in, as far as sins that, that's paralyzing the body of Christ. Exactly. And, and the one of the things that starts out maybe pornography, but can lead to fornication and adultery. So you can yeah. lose your marriage. That's right. You can lose your ministry. Yeah. You know, these are things that defile us and, and can destroy what, what God has for us. We have to stay away from these things, and it's only through prayer and reading the Word that you can do that on a daily basis because there's so much temptation. You look on Facebook, and I'm telling you, you better just keep on scrolling sometimes. And don't stop. You know, there's some things on there. But you don't need to be looking at it. And that's where it starts in the mind. And your mind goes on to acting on things. So we, it's just, it's a discipline. Being a disciple is discipline. Discipline yourself to make a covenant with your eyes, not to look at those things, not to do those things. you got a problem with drinking, don't drink, you know. Um, Amen. Shouldn't yeah. be, as, as holiness, should, you shouldn't drink. I mean, he said the Bible clearly says about, you know, drunkards will not inherit in the kingdom of God. So. Uh, you take that for whatever you want, whatever it's worth. That's what the Bible says. <clears throat> um, it says, uh, verse, I'm trying to think, going down, it says, I beseech, let's see, yeah. Romans, I'm going to flip over just to Romans 12, 1, 2. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you pre, uh, pre present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God which is your reasonable service, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable in the perfect will of God. So it's prevent, present our bodies as a living sacrifice. When we come to Jesus, we give him our life. So it's not yours anymore to do what you want. It's his life to do his will and, and line up with what this word says. But we've got a lot of, there's a lot of false teachers out there that are teaching that, you know, sin's already, you know, Jesus defeated sin, so sin doesn't abound anymore. So you can continue to live like the devil and still go to heaven. Well, I got news for him, it's wrong. It will not happen. And we are to present ourselves holy, not look like the world, not do all the things, you know, uh, and I'll get into a little bit more on, on a lot of the worldly stuff. 
Renew your mind through the word daily, reading the word and obeying it. Be that new creation in Christ. When you come to Jesus, you become a new creation in Christ. Amen. As you read the word and study the word and get into Bible studies and get into church, I don't understand how people can just come on Sundays and not grow. I mean, not, uh, they don't. You can't grow just coming one day a week. You, know, you have to get in church. You have to get rooted. Come out from among them. You know, yeah. and that's you know we're, we're supposed to be serving the kingdom. You know, get in church, clean the church, do things like that. Put your heart. You can tell in the church where people's hearts at Amen. when they come here. You know, God put you in a ministry. You need to serve. Amen. Be obedient. Hey, brother Ron. Yeah. Can we uh, uh, read this? Can I read this chapter? Uh, this verse is what you was talking about earlier. Yeah. About walking, that we don't belong to ourselves anymore. We belong to Christ. I'm, I'm still going back to Hebrews 12 that you're talking about. I'll be preaching. No, about. no. Okay, yeah. I'm, in, I'm somewhere else. I'm in 1 Corinthians. Yeah, that's fine. I might have that on here already. Oh, do you? Well, if you I don't know. That, go I'm going to jump it. Go ahead and read it. On but it says here in, in verse 19, chapter 6. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Well, who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought at a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God. Amen. Yeah, that's right. That's right. We present our, our bodies as a living sacrifice. And it's not what, and I'll get into more of that. So I get into that so. Um there should come a day in your Christian walk where you reach maturity and maturity and bearing fruit. Jesus said if you're connected to the vine that you're going to bear fruit. Yes. Amen. And we have to bear fruit. At the best part. And Jesus even made a tree that didn't bear fruit. He said, well, dig around it and give it give it another year. Let's let's try. So, you know, he, he does have mercy on us, but there has to be a time where you're bearing fruit. Yes. If you're not bearing fruit, most times somebody's not bearing fruit, they're not connected. They're probably connected to the world. Because when you're connected and you're bearing the, the fruits of the Spirit, everything else will follow. You'll bear fruit. It's, it, he just said, if you're connected, you're going to bear. Um, bear fruit. Um, and another big, you know, sin that's that's destroying the church is, is gossip. You know, people like to gossip. And, and what gossip is is when you're, when you're bad-mouthing another person to deter what somebody thinks about somebody else. So we've got to be cautious. Of that because that's really tearing down, you know, when people... Um, leave churches and think, well, you know, we've dealt with that here. They want to go out and tear down the church, tear down the pasture. But what gossip does, um, it destroys not only that Christian, because what comes out of your mouth is what defiles a person. But if, if, you, if you're around people and you're gossiping and they're hearing this, you're, you're claiming, you know, wearing the Christian name tag, they might be wanting to become a Christian, but you just deter them from doing that. And your your their blood's going to be on your hands. Amen. So we have to watch when we're when we're talking about other churches, and, and you know, for for we leave a church and we're talking, you know, because it's happened here, and you go, begin to go out and bad mouth, you know, you could be deterring other people from church. Like I don't want to, you know, they're talking about all this stuff, so I don't even want to go to church. So we got to be cautious of that of tearing down God's kingdom because you defile yourself, but you also defile the kingdom, and you're going to answer as a Christian, professing Christian, you're going to answer for that on the judgment day. Or tearing down his kingdom, so we just got to be cautious about um, about gossip. It's it's really uh, it's really bad. It says, uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and read it. Matthew 15 11 through 20 says, not what goes into the mouth that defiles a man, talking about like food and stuff like that, but it's what comes out of the mouth that defiles a man. And, you know, if you got a problem with with leaders or people in the church or with the church, go to an elder or pastor and take that up with them. Don't go out side of the walls and begin to gossip and talk and all that stuff and stir up trouble. Like I said, you're because not you're tearing down yourself and the kingdom. Amen. Amen. Hebrews 12 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So for the joy was set before him he endured the cross, the joy of the church, the joy of reuniting us with the Father. He endured the cross. And I'm telling you, the crucifixion, that's the horriblest death you can go. They like beheading and it's over. I mean, they, he suffered on that cross. Amen. Amen. And, um, you know, if you study some of that stuff, it's uh, the crucifixion's really bad. So that's what's kind of talking about. Um, 
So he reconciled us to the Father, um, destroying the power of sin, death, hell, and the grave. Sin's still there, but he's well, if he is in you, he helps you defeat and overcome sin through reading the word and prayer. Amen. It is a work. We have we have to do our part. It just yes. don't go away. We have to, you know, in, in the beginning, it's like you got to practice not sinning. You know, if you know things, you're just, it's just it's getting into new habits and getting rid of the old habits, coming into that holiness, that image of Christ. Amen. It says, um, for consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin, and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons. So it said, don't grow weary in doing good. Yeah. And, and this is where it comes in. It's really, you know, everyday life, it is easy to get in a rut. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. We do the same thing, the same routine every day. So we got to be cautious not to, you know, try to stay out of that rut because it comes. We can grow weary in doing that, and that's what's talking about. Life feels repetitive, so we got to keep strengthened up through prayer. And, and you know, really, what keeps me going is when you get to go out and, and do the work of Christ. You know, Amen. working for the kingdom, it stirs up that fire in your soul because you're coming here, you're getting living water, and you're only pouring it right back out, and yes. it becomes like a river flowing through you yes. as you pray for people, minister to people. Um, you know, lead people to Christ. Whatever you're out doing, it just in good works and good deeds. You know, showing your faith yes. by your works. Amen. So it's real important that, that keeps you out of that rut. Going out and just be be active for Jesus with the Holy Spirit's working in you. He's not a sitting spirit. He is a moving spirit. Yes, that's right. He is a moving spirit. He will keep you moving and keep you going. Oh, and when we're you know in the flesh, we get tired, but our spirit's willing. So we yes. got to continue to. To, to work. Um, and, and, and another thing, and that's just remembering where God's brought you out of. You know, a lot of us, he brought us out of the bars and the drinking and the drugs and alcohol and sex and everything else. He's brought us out of this stuff, so we keep that in our mind. Yes. You know, and it's, uh, you know, we overcome, we've overcome uh, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, so that's very important. Just keep stirring Sometimes you just got to encourage yourself. Amen. You got to stir yourself up. That's right. Amen. Praying in the spirit, stir yourself. I'm, yes. I'm a pretty laid back guy, but I have to stir myself up, you know, because you have to. That's what you have to do, you know. Yes. And uh, sometimes you just got to do it. You can't depend on somebody else to do it for you. You got to stir yourself up. Amen. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by Him, for whom the Lord loves, He chastens, and He scourges every son whom He receives. <laughs> so thanks to thanks be to God when you get a Holy Ghost spanking because that's what He does. You know if you're if He's rebuking you and He's you, something's He's pricking at your heart about something, that's a good thing because He's wanting you to correct it. Amen. So right. and if He's not correcting you, you might not be a child of His. That's right. That's you right, know? brother. That's right. And if you he keep if He cool. keeps yeah. trying to correct you and you don't listen, you may not be a child of His. You may just you know you just don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> He might disown you. I don't know, but you, we have to. When when we read the word and, and we see the things, we have to line up with this word. I mean, we have to. It's it's a. This is not a prosperity gospel. It's a gospel of sacrifice. Yeah. It's self sacrifice. It's yeah. not a self seeking. They made a self seeking gospel out of it, so everybody fill the churches up and they fill their pockets up and. Big numbers, and they can brag about all that stuff, but it's 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 not a self-seeking; it's sacrifice. Amen. Amen. And Jesus showed that throughout the whole Bible. Yes. We have to lay our life down. This this is just the gospel. It's you're going, you're going to be afflicted. You're going to be people's going to talk about you. They're going to you know. Um, it's just going to happen. But he said these things are going to happen. And he's going to deliver us out of all of them. So. You endure chastening. God deals with you as sons. For what son is it there whom a father does not chasten? And most of us, you know, um, you know, we got spankings when we're kids. A lot of us here when we're kids, we get spankings. That's where God put that extra cushion there. And uh, I can remember the days, you know, mom, you know, we got we got our spankings. She's like, wait, your dad comes home. We come running back. All right, don't tell him. You know, with the dad, you know, we take care of business, you know. But mom, see, she had to catch us. So we'd do stuff, or we'd mouth off, or we'd run out that door, and man, you see flip flops flying, and you throwing stuff at us. And, 
So we knew to give her about 30, 45 minutes to cool down a little bit, and then we could come on back. Yeah, we had to give her a cool down time. So once we got her good and aggravated, and Matt's like, yep, yeah, he's right. Flip flops and shoes, boy, come flying out the door. That screen door would open. So, <laughs> so you know, just like we correct our children, God corrects us. And, and that's what he wants us to bring us into is that holiness that to, to walk in the fruits of the Spirit and walk in the Spirit, not walk after the flesh. But like I said, there's a gospel out there, and it's 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 so bad these last days. And they said it was going to be that it satisfies the flesh. And I, I see so many people. Well, I want to find me a church where it's comfortable. Well, I'm going to tell you, brother, if you're comfortable and you're living in sin, you better find you in our church. Period. Period. But if you are without chastening, of which all had become partakers. Then you are illegitimate and not sons. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? For they indeed for a few days chasten us and seem best to them, but he for our profit that we may be partakers of his holiness. So that's what he chastises us for. You know, when you feel conviction on, on the preaching or teaching, that's ch you know, he's chastised you to, so we can line up with the word of God to stay on that narrow road so we can make it to heaven. You know, we got to endure to the end. It's not just get saved and sit back and wait on Jesus to return. That's right. It's get saved and stay saved and, and do the will of the Father. Amen. Because yeah. it says Amen. not all that enters in, it says Lord, Lord's going to enter in. It's those who do the will of my Father. Amen. Period. He said, and that's what he said. Pick up your cross daily, deny yourself. He doesn't, you know, God doesn't want anybody to end up in hell. And I hear people, you know, oh, what about grace, brother? What about, you know, I, I know what grace is. Because I, there was many nights when I was drunk out of my mind or high out of my mind. I should have been dead. That's grace. The devil should have took me then. That's grace. It's not grace for me to continue to live like it. That's grace for me. He should have killed me years ago. You know, or let the devil kill me. Um, you know, because out of the mouth of two or three witnesses under Moses' law, they would stone them. So how much more is going to be our judgment when we're living sinful lifestyles and just stepping on, trampling on the spirit of grace? We're in trouble. You know, he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. You've got to read the whole Bible on the things that God done, you know. He's a just God and a God of judgment. He sent his son, and it's best that we don't trample on him Amen. by our fleshly desires. Amen. <clears throat> I'm just going to, I think it might have been with uh, 2 Corinthians 6.16. 6, and what, what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said. I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them. Be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Um, Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. So it's continuing. It's a daily work with the Lord. You know, it's not just Sunday. It's not just Tuesday. It's not just Thursday. Like I told you, right now is a time through November and December we really need to be digging in because everybody gets busy. And that's when the occult's out doing all their stuff. You know, they're, they're in full swing. So we have to be praying against a lot of these attacks on our families because a lot of us here, you know, been under attack. Um, and it says, I'm going to read Galatians. So it talks about the, the filthiness of the flesh and spirit. And Galatians talks about this a little bit. And a lot of people don't preach on it, especially you go to some of them other churches. They won't, they won't talk about it. Um, and, you know, they kind of kind of mock us a little bit because we we really take the gospel. It's, 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 the gospel is really simple. God didn't make it to be hard where he had to, or, was, or he couldn't understand it. So I, I take it literal. You know, when God says something, he means it. That's right. You know, and there's no, no way around it. In Galatians 5, 19 through 21, it says, um, Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are? Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcerer, hatred, contentions, jealousy, 
outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like. Of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in time past, that those who practice, and there's the key word, practice, such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Period. There's a period there. That's it. That's what God says. So we cannot practice, you know, there's times, you know, we, we get in the flesh, we get mad, you know, something like that, we get mad, and you might act out of the flesh, and you have to, you know, repent, and Lord, I'm not going to do it again. That, that's where grace and mercy comes in. But if you're living a lifestyle of these things, like I said, if you're practicing this stuff, then you really need to look at your salvation. What are we getting toward? Why am I preaching this? Because we conform ourselves to holiness. Not perfect. God, God knows we're not going to be perfect. You know, we're not. If he's, he's picked the wrong guy here if he's looking for somebody amen. perfect. Amen. So, but he wants us to be holy. He wants us to be separate. Yes, amen. When you talk to somebody, they should know something's different about you. Yes. Amen. Not that you're trying to be different, but that you are different because he's, the Holy Spirit has come in and done a work in you. And he's brought you in. you got the Spirit of God working in you, so you're going to be holy. It's, uh, holiness only comes from the Spirit of God. It doesn't come by... Some people try to dress it up. You can look all holy and speak the lingo. Yeah. God says, you're, you know, you confess me with your, your mouth, but your heart's far from me. Yeah. You draw close with your lips, but your heart's far from me. Amen. So we can talk all that, but it starts in the heart. You know, it's like what you, the one scripture about the cleaning the, the dish or whatever. you got to clean the inside first and the outside of it. Uh, come clean. And so like I said, it's not perfectness. It's a holy. Walking in holiness is only by the Holy Spirit. That's why you see a lot of people that call themselves Christians that they're not walking in holiness because the Holy Spirit's not working in them. Right. Or they're not listening to him. That's right. Amen. Period. That's right. Preach it, so it's only work that the Holy Spirit does. When he tells you to do something, when you read something, okay, I'm not supposed to do that. And that's, that's the work and that's the process that we come to that image. And like I said, people will know that something's different about you. They'll sense it just because you don't talk like other people. Um, and They'll, they'll notice that. They'll notice something different. Um, why should we fear God? Because he can destroy the body and the soul. He wants us to be set apart. He corrects us to perfect holiness. That's why as believers we should not look like the world and entangle ourselves with affairs of it. Amen. Through conversation people should know something's different. Like I said, I was just talking about that. Um, I, and this is where we don't see, this is, this is I believe, or we don't see any power in the church. The reason why the church has lost its power in the fire of the Holy Spirit is because it's lost its true biblical holiness. America has watered down the gospel so much yes. that they've conformed, they've brought the world into the gospel and say, here, you can, you can do all this stuff and still go to heaven. See, we want the cake and we want to eat it too. Amen. We want to go to heaven, but we don't want to, the sacrifice, that crushing where that oil begins to run out of us. So... This is where it all comes in. This is why we don't really, I mean, there's some churches operating in the spirits, the gifts of the spirit, the fire of the Holy Spirit, people getting delivered or getting set free. God be the glory. Our church is one of them. Hallelujah. Amen. But a lot of them, that's where they've lost that true biblical holiness. And without holiness, the Holy Spirit, he's not going to, he's not going to do those things that, unless the temples are clean, you know, cleansed. And it's everybody getting in one accord. You know, like I said, it's not being perfect. It's just, it's just, Allowing God to do his work in you and come to that, that fullness. Um, see, Matthew 26, 73. A little later, those who stood by him came up to him and said to Peter, Surely you also are one of them, for your speech betrays you. So he tried to deny it, but it was, it was speech. So people know you're saying amen, hallelujah, and all this stuff. People will know there's something different about you. And that's, you know, like I said, it's not that we're trying to be different. It's just that we are because we came to that image. And sometimes it's such a work that you don't even realize. Other people see it, but you won't, you know, sometimes because it's a process. And like I've talked about before, it's not the clothes or the way you dress, you know, looking holy and all that stuff. Some, there's probably religions out there that, you know, <laughs> you got to dress a certain way. You know, when God's doing his work in you, as in, obviously, you know, people come in, they, you know, you have to cover yourself up and stuff like that. You can't, you know. But 
it's it's coming to that image, you know, when you when Christ is working in somebody, you give them time, and they'll they'll shape up to you know God will show them through the Word, and if they're in a good Bible believing church, they'll conform to that image and do what God expects, you know. And um, and it, and holiness, um, it starts in the heart. It starts in the heart. You know, when you get that heart changed, the Lord Jesus Christ, when you turn your life over to Him, He comes in and does His work. Uh, that's where it starts. And, and wanting to do the things that please God. So if you're wanting to do things that please God, you know, that's kind of where it starts because you're giving your life over to Him. And, uh, yeah, here's the one in the Scripture I was talking about. It's Matthew. I'll just read it. If y'all want to turn to your canvas. It's Matthew 25, 23. 25 through 26. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, <clears throat> hypocrites, for you cleanse the outside of the cup and dish, but the inside are full of extortion and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisees first cleanse the inside of the cup and the dish, and then the outside of them may be clean also. Amen. Amen. Anybody got any questions or want to make any comments? Good question. They they just took different parts or some some I don't know different religions. They what they've done is they kind of took and they'll take one or two scriptures and run with it yeah. instead of basically you, you need to. But well, I've always been told, read, read six scriptures before, you know, six verses before, six verses after, to put it together, and find two or three or four other verses that match up, because, you know, they're all different people that wrote, wrote so they wrote things a little different, and um, man, man so, gets yeah, man gets involved. Yeah, man gets involved. gets involved yeah. and create different, because they get an idea, and they think it's words, they think it's in the Bible, and it's not, and they create their own... Well, right, yeah. Well, I think what it is, too, sometimes men try to be God. Yeah. So they want to create something new. Oh, we got this here. What says this? So we want to, they want to create something new to be like God. Or, you know, have people to glorify them instead of just being a servant, be obedient to what it says, study the scriptures, one, you know, back and forth. It's also a great way for the devil to deceive you from the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and that's their, and that's not, she's on that. And I'm going to go ahead and say, just because they're in a pulpit, just because they got a little certificate, doesn't mean God has called them. That's right. That's right. It, it's, that's right. it's the Holy Spirit that anoints the person. You can have you can have people without a certificate be more anointed than somebody with the, but what is people think, oh, well, they got a degree, they got a certificate, man, they must be the real deal. But you, <laughs> this is why you have to read this word. That's right. Because that's right, right. if you read this, and you study it, nobody's going to deceive you. Because right, right. when they start saying stuff that don't line up with this word, you're going to know. Amen. But this is what's happened. America's got too lazy to read this word. That's right. And they, they, they're just like, I don't want to read it. That won't take I me. Mean, man, you can take 15 minutes a day and read this word and read it in a year. You know, and just kind of ponder on things. Read, read a little bit of it in the morning and ponder on it through the day, and you won't be deceived. But that's why they're deceived. Because they're just listening to what a preacher tells them. That's right. That's right. And these men, I'm telling you, they're self-seeking. A lot of them, you know, they're just, they're, they're self, they're, they're wanting money. So they're telling you things to smooth your flesh out so it feels good. And, and, and that's why these different doctrines get made. They'll take one scripture and they'll run with it. And people, they jump on it because it sounds good. It, it sounds almost like the real thing. But it's counterfeit. It's not the real thing. And they warned of that in the Bible. They warn of it many a times. Mm -hmm. There's going to be false prophets and teachers that yes. comes in to deceive people. Yes. And they're going to flock to them because that's, that's what right. they want to hear. Right. They don't want to hear the truth. People right. don't want to hear that they have to quit drinking and, and doing all these things right. in the world to, to go to heaven. You know, and, and that they have to obey the word of God. Right. You know? mm -hmm. Ron, uh, a lot of times these seminaries are teaching their future pastors to learn and study a certain way and, and preach a certain way and they won't allow those preachers to get off of what they're teaching them yes. so they create a denomination from that just like the Baptists and the Methodists and all the rest of them they're, they're taught in the seminaries what to say and what not to do right. to make it look they gotta look right they gotta preach right they gotta be a, a, 
an orator or whatever you call that word. Uh, a good speech. Uh, yeah, a good yeah. speech. Uh, and, and so people will look to them right. instead of looking As you're to lifting the up the man right, right there. Yeah. That, that's cross right there. And yeah. The one that was on that cross, that's that's who's got to be lifted up during the service. Amen. It's him and him alone. Unfortunately, right. like they, they want to lift themselves up with a yeah. great speech. But if you when you read the Bible and the more you study it, Jesus didn't choose. He chose the small things of the world to confound those wise. They were operating in the power of the Holy Ghost, doing the miracles and stuff. And the, the religious people and the, the the ones that you know had all about, the they just couldn't understand it. So they they thought they were devils because they were doing actually what Jesus taught. And he he went past the the scribe the fair you know he went past the religious leaders and found people that he can work with. Yes. I don't need you know Moses wasn't a man of good speech. He don't need you know. Because God gets all the glory. Amen. You know, and everybody here knows I, I'm not a great speaker. I never spoke in front of anybody until um, until pastor asked me to speak in front of a Bible study. As a pastor, I never spoke in front of anybody. But as but the Spirit of God begins to work in you as you begin to push yourself and you step forward and he'll meet you. But Amen. he gets the glory. You know, it's him. It's not me. You know? Amen. And, that, and that's where it comes in. So... Just because they got all these certificates, not not that that, that stuff's great. I'm not I'm not knocking any of it. That stuff is great when you can get all that knowledge and wisdom, but it has to be run by the Holy Ghost. The show has to be run by God. You know, the Spirit of God has to. And what happens? Man runs it, and like I said, gets his hands and it gets up. Let the Holy Spirit do what He wants to do. When you get your message, let, you can't do messages out six months ahead of time. You know, because a day or two before, God will give you something fresh that somebody needs to hear in the church. You know, so you can't you can't go way out and do this stuff. Right. When y'all talked about you, we need to read our Bibles, the one good reason is also because one day we're not going to have a Bible. Oh yeah. They're going to destroy our Bible. Yeah. I mean, I can see that happening. You know. Yeah, believe it or not, there's going to be a day in America if the Lord yeah. doesn't get us out yeah. here. If you don't know that Bible, that one world order be, comes in, Bibles will be gone. Will be. Mm -hmm. And that's why we got to teach this to our kids. Yeah. We got to teach our kids. So they're not deceived, you know. Our children, I know, read this truth because it's right. going to be as the days grow longer. Especially this this, this gospel, here. they're going to try and push it more. They're already trying to change it. Yeah, right. they're already trying to change it a little bit. Words and stuff like that in it. So when they yeah. take them away, we have to know the truth. We can't go back to it. You right. Be better. Because they don't want people. They don't want to hear this. They don't want to hear holy living. Exactly. And that's why I said that's why the powers left the church. Amen. 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 One more question. California already done. Yeah, they're trying to ban it. And yep. There were businesses that were supporting it before the bill was even passed, and they were throwing Bibles out of hotels and out of uh, dorm rooms and stuff. And I don't know if they ever did pass or not, but I do remember seeing a video about it. So it's already started. We all in another time will get done. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh yeah. <laughs> Probably yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. right. All right, we'll move on through this. Um, this is, what have the temple of God with idols? Idol worship is big in the body of Christ. And what's the first commandment say? No, Those not have no other gods before. No other gods. <laughs> Don't worship the creation. Worship the creator. Amen. Amen. The word idol comes from an... Uh, it's an old French word for idol. It's a pagan god or a false god is what an idol is. Basically, like it's, it's whatever your mind's on all the time, really. I mean, I know you know we work during our day, so you're focused on your work, but on all your other times, whatever your mind is, is focused on, that, that kind of becomes your idol. It really is your idol. So that's why Jesus said, keep, keep your eyes on Jesus. Let Amen. Be your idol. Amen. You know, Amen. stay in the Word. And um, I want to get into some modern day idol worships that, that people don't really think about. This is this is called uh, Magazine Christian Today. Put this on. So I want to read some of this stuff because it's, you know, th this could be hindering holiness, you know. And it says, uh, we are taught by the Bible, always put God first in our hearts. Colossians 3, 5 says, put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Um, here are five modern day things that we find it hard to admit are actually taking over our lives. One of them was work. Says, Many people look to work for a sense of significance and security. 
While there is nothing wrong with work, it can be dangerous when it drives our decision making to the point of completely ignoring God's ways and desires, or we put it therefore uh, put it before things that are equally or more deserving of our time. So that was one of them was work. So anybody want to comment on on work? About, you know, it could be it could become an idol. You know, we, we all have to work, but but don't let it consume your life. Is kind of what they're saying here. You know, yeah, well, they get and a lot of times people just get in so much debt that they got to work two jobs, both parents are working two jobs, and it's just the work of the enemy, you know, because what we want the lustful, we want all the great things in life that we think that we want, and it's just the work of the enemy, you know, the lust of the eyes. That's the devil, that's right. See, yeah, sure is. Uh, the next one is success can be an idol, you know, striving to be successful. Amen. Uh, God wants us to be successful, but he does not desire success to take his place in our hearts. When we pursue su uh, success outside of God's will, we will find no satisfaction. But when we choose to surrender to God and his ways, Joshua 1, 8 promises that we will be prosperous and successful. It's particularly easy to make decisions and idle when we follow other people's definitions rather than God's. So we got to, you know, like I said, we don't want to get caught up in, in success and all that stuff. So it was just, like I said, they listed five things there. One of them thing, what's well, going to be a big one? Oh. Phones. Amen. Oh. Or tablets or whatever shiny piece of kit you carry around with you and can't stop checking every five minutes. If you're giving your electronic device more time and attention than your loved ones, something's that. wrong. Amen. So that's a big one. It's, guys, this is things we don't think about. That's why I'm, I'm bringing all this up. You know, you know, we want to we want to do the best we can to, to make sure we're where we want to be. Um, image in, in in the age of Facebook and Instagram, we can be obsessed with projecting the image of the perfect life, perfect relationship, perfect kids, perfect holidays, perfect friendship group. Just choose your filter, and in one click. Your life can look like everybody else's dream come true. But the Christian faith is about the joy found in God more than ourselves or the things of this world. Amen. Let's make sure we're projecting this image to others more than anything else. That our Christian lives, projecting that to people and, and what God's doing in our life. You know, glorify him. Yeah. I always say what well, the devil tries to use for, for to destroy people. I take it and use it for God's good. Amen, Facebook, right. YouTube, man, you put stuff on there, put scriptures on there, put videos on there about uh, preachings and teaching and things like that, and, and just combat the devil with it. You know, use it for God's glory. So those things, they're not bad if you use them in the right way. Amen. And it's just, you know, we have to, and it's really what they're getting in here is just, um, just being aware of where you're spending your time. You know, because you can get caught up in this stuff and really go on for days and weeks and not really realize it, you know, because it becomes routine. So don't we don't want to get caught up in, in some of these things because it's it's what pulls us away from God, pulls our time, pulls his presence out of our life. Amen. He's a jealous God. That's right. He's a jealous. He's not going to have any other God before him. Just always remember that. So just always keep that in check, what you're doing with your times. Um. And amongst all those pictures of yourself and all the great things in your life, are there any pictures of your church or anything that would speak of the world of your faith in God? Like I just spoke, that's what they're, that's what they're talking about on here. Um, here's another one, materialism. Mm -hmm. This is a prevalent problem, most especially with younger generations with all the peer pressure. But that's not to say that older generations are free from it. As today's consumerism not to mention billion dollar advertising industries drive us to believe that we need certain objects, possessions, and substances to feel happy and content. And with the internet shopping in today's global market, there's no end to the things we could buy. Now more than ever, we can need that fruit of the spirit, self-control. I was just talking about just having that self-control and keeping in check. And if you're in, you know, if you've got a relationship with the Lord, he'll keep you in check. He'll, Amen. He'll know, you, he'll, you know. He'll take care of that. Well, here's another one. What's going? On? Sex. Although sex was designed and created by God, man has mal maligned and distorted its value and purpose. Amen. We can be easily driven by the flesh instead of the Word of God, especially in an age 
when nudity is celebrated over modesty, sexual ex exploits are boasted over, mm -hmm. and our visual culture is awash with um, provocative images. Mm -hmm. In this day and age, sex has become an idol that drives us to make small and big decisions that will lead us away from Christ yeah. if we're not careful. Amen. So these are modern day idols. Mm -hmm. Money. Okay, so it's not exactly a modern day temptation only, but the lesson remains the same. There is much value in money, but it is not the most valuable thing. That's why Jesus teaches in Matthew 6, 24, no one can serve two masters, for either one will hate one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in money. So we need it to operate, but just don't be consumed with it. Like you just got to, you know, people just want to hoard it all up, you know. So that's kind of what it's talking about. So those are the five things. And we'll go over them again here. It's uh, work, success, phones, materialism, sex, money. And Hebrews 12, I'm gonna, uh, 11, we're going to it. Now, um, now, no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. The chastising, you know, listen to the Lord when he speaks to you and all that. Therefore, strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. Make straight the paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be dislocated, but rather be healed. And then 14 says, pursue peace with all people and holiness. And what does it say after that? Without which no one will see the Lord. That's right. We have to strive for this. It ain't being perfect. It's just putting down those things in the world, yeah. the, the fleshly desires, and putting God first. Amen. And you'll come into that image of Christ. <clears throat> Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled, lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau, who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. For you know that afterward, when he wanted to inherit the blessings, he was rejected for you. He found no place for repentance, though he saw it diligently with tears. And I'm finished. Do you all have any questions on anything? About idols or any of this thing we've touched on? Holiness? We got a good grasp of what God expects from us. Well, let's talk about the inward and outward because when you get saved in the Holy Ghost, you get the Holy Ghost. It cleans you up and you don't uh, talk the same. Right. the same. You know, people should know that when you talk about Yeah, when Christ comes into your soul and he begins to work, yeah, it's, it's an... It, people begin to take notice and it starts on the inside and then the outside gets cleaned up, you know, because you want to line up with the word of God. Anybody else got anything? Close. All right, for all our YouTube people that um, that watch, we thank you. Um, if, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, repent of your ways. Ask Christ to come in your heart. Believe that he was born of a virgin, died on a cross, rose on the third day. And ask him to wash you in his blood, and he'll save you, and you'll be on your way to heaven. Find you a good Bible-believing church where they'll tell you the truth and not what you want to hear. And we thank you all for watching. Amen. Amen.